Okay, everybody should be set uh, with record. Are we good? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Make sure. I'm... Okay. Um, turn a little bit, but to see that light right there, it's hitting you. Can you scoot over just a tad bit? There. That's better. Just a little bit. Okay. Okay, Scott Ritchie, you can get us started. And I'll join in. Just go ahead and go. Hey, Kofi, how you doing? I'm good. How about you? Good. Um, so I guess just first question, did you ever get an explanation for that flagrant one that was that you were called for against Missouri? Just kind of what happened during that play? No, I haven't. I haven't gotten one yet. I mean to give him a basketball, you know, I'm, I'm not a dirty player. Um, that was like the referee thought that I hit him in the face. It was definitely not intentionally. I felt like I was in great post position. I kept my hands up. The referees made the call, so we have to live with it. We talked with Brad earlier today, and he said he's kind of been frustrated by how you're being officiated, and mostly maybe just you know, fouls not being called against you, you know, when maybe they could be. Just how do you feel about that? Um, I feel the same way, um, you know, stuff being out there, you know, you're getting hit and you're getting fouled and you, you still got to play on without them. Um, you know, I'm, I can't really worry about that. I got to continue playing my game because at the end of the day, um, if, I get, if, if I get fouled and if referees don't, don't call it, the ball is still going the opposite direction. I still have to get back and play defense. So it's just about like me trying to keep, keep my mind clear, you know, not trying to worry about it too much, not trying to get frustrated. I'm kind of got frustrated that last game on that foul that they called and I reacted, overreacted. Just trying to hold my composure, you know, play through those stuff. I'm um, not getting mad at referees. Um, they're human and as well as I am, and they make mistakes. Sometimes they make a bad call, you know. Game of basketball has 10 players and only three referees. So for me, they're going to make mistakes. I just got to accept it sometimes and just keep playing. I guess one last from me. How do you feel like maybe you have handled that just throughout the season and may just tried to play you know, your game? I think I, I think I handled it well. Um, you know, I'm... I'm so I think that I've, I've gotten, gotten more mature from last year, you know, not like being, getting on the bench, not holding myself down, you know, always trying to stay ready to play no, no matter what happens, you know, just keeping a, a clear mind, not getting frustrated and, and not taking my anger out on anything else, but just focusing on the game. I think I've done really good with just like not worrying about it at all. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Kofi, would you talk about defensive rotations and, uh, where you are right now, where you feel you are right now, what you've learned, how you developed, and what you have yet to uh, improve on. Defensive rotation, that's all about just being engaged, um, you know, making sure that you're talking, communicating with the guys, because sometimes we don't see everything. And I'm, I'm the anchor, basically, being in the center. I'm playing down low, I see everything. So um, my, my, my whole deal is just being, like, being talkative, being commun communicate with the, with the guys if anything's happening, like a back cut or a screen's coming or something. Um, with defensive rotations, I think I'm good with that. Um, you know, being able to guard the screen, guard the ball screens. I started off a little bit, a little bit shaky, I would say, against um, Baylor. But after that, I picked up my whole ways of just guarding the ball, sitting down, you know, backpedaling, keeping them in front of me. Um, that's just the, the whole thing with me, just being talkative, being active. You know, make sure I'm in the right spot, right spots for the guys whenever they get beat or something. Does it make it easier? or harder that you have to be like the quarterback or the conductor to call out defenses? Not really. I feel like basketball has a lot to do like with, with regular, regular life. And that's the kind of person I am in, in, in real life. As you see me right here, um, I'm a really talkative person. I, like, I love to communicate with people, I love to talk. So when I get on the court, it's just about like trans, transferring that energy to, to, to make it uh, like productive basically. Just talking to the guys and making sure that they're in the right spots and trying to help them as much as I can. Trying to bring energy, you know, like, it's really like they absorb that energy when I talk. And I feel like once I start getting active, I start talking, everybody starts adapting to that and start talking as well. And it makes the game way easier for us. Well, that sounds good then. All right. Congratulations. Uh, good luck tomorrow. Thanks. Thank um, hey, Kofi. So Brad said that after the Ohio game, you guys kind of made some tweaks to ball screen defense. Mm -hmm. What have you guys kind of been doing differently and how have you been more effective? Yeah, so we kind of we kind of changed the ball screens um, at the beginning of the year where we started sending guys one way, like to the weak hand. And I feel like coach saw that that wasn't really working for us, so he decided to go back to the old ways where we, from last year where we just like call out the ball screens. You know, we have our own ball screen coverage that we that we do, and we have we know what spots to get to on the ball screen coverage. So 
he, like that's just, that's just it. He just told us that we're gonna go back to the last last years and keep dominating the way we dominated last year and, and, and the end of the year. And as the big, what's kind of your role in those pick and roll scenarios? Pick and roll scenarios. I'm just just keeping the guys in front of me. You know, like the the, the point guard coming down at me, just making sure that I'm backpedaling, I'm staying squared up, not opening up, and just making sure that my guy doesn't get doesn't be, go behind me. Basically, so it's me denying the lob and making sure that I keep the guy in front of me until my card gets over. Thanks, Kofi. Hey, Kofi, hope you've had a good day. First question I guess I have is, Brad said earlier today that he wants to see you um, be able to get out, rebounds outside of just right under the rim. How much do you think that can help get the offense going in transition a little bit more if you're able to start doing that? It will, it will definitely be big, big time. Um, I've struggled a little bit with doing that just because I have to, the Duke game, I had to guard guards, so I had to guard shooters being out, outside the perimeter. So it's just about, you know, getting that mindset, like locking in. It's about learning as well. Like I'm learning now that when I'm on the perimeter guarding because I, there'll be a lot of those situations because I proof that I could guard out there now. So it's just about just putting that in my mind that whenever the shot goes up, make sure that I'm not leaking out, make sure that I'm going right back to the, to the, to the glass. This is something new for me, guarding outside. So I just have to like make sure that I'm taking those, listening to coaching. And it's basically been carrying it over in the game. Something else he kind of mentioned earlier today was um, sometimes how you've struggled, I guess, to maybe corral pass from Andre Carvello inside the paint. Is that just part of learning how you guys are, the chemistry you guys have on the court and just like seeing the court a little bit differently under the rim? Yeah. Andre Carvello, that's a re he's a really interesting player. Um, he sometimes makes passes that no one expects him to make and sometimes he like he's a season, he sees the floor differently. I just got to start getting used to that, you know. Like never, never really play with somebody like him that has that that vision, you know. So this is about me getting ready for that. Make sure I'm always ready. I kind of like slacked a little bit where I wasn't like prepared to catch the ball. So when I, I when he catches me by surprise, that's where it was. Like I didn't really catch it, but I just have to get used to him. Just knowing that yeah, he's probably gonna make that pass. He's gonna get it through there to me. Is there really any way for you to? practice that with him outside of a scrimmage setting or outside of a game setting because you know if you're just in the gym the two of you it's hard for him to just you know make some of the passes that we've seen him make in games yeah it's not really about practicing it's about just knowing personnel um just knowing that he's going to look for me right there he's he's trying to make that pass you know he has a different he has a different iq basically so just just knowing that yo he he most likely 100 percent going to make that pass so just be ready for it and be ready to be explosive be ready to go up and finish it Thanks, Kofi. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Hey, good afternoon, Kofi. I'm just wondering, as you go into the Big Ten season this year, how are you more equipped, uh, I guess, to handle what this is going to be than you were a year ago? Like, it's all about maturity, man. Um, just like be, being comfortable now, you know, I, I've played against all these teams before. I know what they got. I know what they come with. I know what I, I'm capable of doing. I know what my team's capable of doing. Um, I have a really good, really good basketball team, my guards, my bigs. And I feel like we could accomplish a lot just by going out there and just doing what we do. You know, we have a really good coaching staff that gets us, gets us prepared for the games, both defensively and offensively. This is about like knowing details, you know, and just being being confident, you know. Second year player, I'm confident going out there. I won't get rattled as much as I did last year. You know, I won't be as, as nervous as I was in the start of the games. So just about being confident now and just knowing that I'm a veteran, I, I should go out there and I should, I should do it, you know, I should be there, I should dominate. As you've been around now for, you know, more than a year, are you noticing teams scheme you differently, attack you differently? And what's the, I'm guessing, yeah, so what's the big way to handle that? <laughs> it's really tough, man, you know, um, I'm a big body. So guys really, they, they really clogger, they, they really clobber the, the middle a lot, the paint. So it's really hard for the guys to get those passes through to me. I just have to, like coach talked to me today about it, like, just not worrying about the first tag, you know, not, not worrying about the first first stop, basically, but making sure I'm staying engaged and make sure I'm, make sure I'm posting while the, while the play is, is still running. So just not giving up on the plays, you know, like just making sure that don't get frustrated because I don't get the ball and just stick to the plan. We have a plan. Coach Gentry is a really, really good coach, and he makes sure that he puts us in position to be successful regardless of what you do. So just have to st stick to it, stick to the plan, and, and hope, that, hope that everything turns out to the best. Are you getting used to being hit more now? I mean, I would assume that may have been a surprise last year, but you kind of hit quite a bit a lot in the course of a game. Yeah, I mean, I'm a physical guy. I, I love contact, so it doesn't really bother me. It's not even about getting used to it. It's just, it's just like, it doesn't bother me. So 
regardless of how many guys you send to me, how many, how many times you hit me, I'm, I'm still going to be the same physical player. I could take those hits. Thanks, Kofi. Hey, Kofi, I, I know this is a quick uh, non-conference schedule, but what, do you, what did you guys learn about yourselves uh, in, in these games, especially the last four? Um, yeah, I, I think, first thing I want to thank Coach Underwood for schedule, giving us a schedule like that. Um, he, gave, he gave us, like, a lot of teams not playing us, like the teams that we played. You know, we played two top ten teams in the country. We played a huge rivalry team in, in Mizzou. And Ohio was a really, really good team, whether people could um, want to admit it or not. So he really prepared us for Big Ten play. And that's what's important. Like, we can't really get on a high horse. You know, we was ranked and, and everybody was, like, confident. Everybody thought that, yeah, we was really good. We was really good, which we are. But it's just about, like, preparing us for what's, what's, what's going to be the, the real deal, you know, Big Ten play is really tough. Every night's going to be tough. So I think Coach Underwood did a really good job with getting us the right games to prepare us for that, you know, physical games, games where we're going to be challenged on the glass, you know, and challenged physically. So I think that th these these first games, they really prepared us for what's going to really be, be in the Big Ten, you know, which is hard, hard nights, you know, two possession games, um, you know, just, just a lot of com competition. I was going to ask, like, do you tell the young guys what to expect? What would you tell them about okay. Big Ten? Yeah, we definitely. Yeah, that's that's definitely. That's you have to do that because they, they have no idea, you know. You, and yeah, you guys watch the Big Ten basketball for a number of years now, and you see what it is. It's a whole different story, man. You know, like it's it's hard because you know you tell them this right now, and they don't really understand fully. Because you can, you can tell somebody something, they think they know what you're talking about. So they they their time's gonna come, you know, when they play tomorrow and they get the first taste of Big Ten play and they see how it is, and then after that they're gonna just. I think they're really really good players and they're smart players, so. It won't take long for them to just a big time play. Thanks, Kofi. Hey, Kofi, I've just got one question for you. What, individually, what did you expect out of yourself to start the season? And, and you know, going into the Big Ten, how would you rate your performance so far? Individually, um, I expected me to be me, you know, um, being a good defensive presence. Um, that's what a lot of teams would expect from me, my size and my, my ability to move and jump. I'm just being a good defensive presence, being dominant in the class, you know, finishing plays. Um, but where I think I am right now, um, I had a couple of slow games due to foul trouble and just like not not playing that much because, like like I said, it's my foul trouble. So I wouldn't say I'm doing really good, but like I think I'm at a good place with just knowing what I'm capable of doing, my confidence, and just and just you know just being the leader, you know, being that guy that's gonna get everybody going. So I think I'm in a, in a good place right now. Okay, Joey, go ahead with your – you had a follow-up. Yeah. Hey, Kofi, you mentioned foul trouble. Uh, how do you – I mean, are, are you able to maybe stay engaged in games better now, having time under your belt and, and knowing how to kind of ramp it back up when, when you're able to get back in the game? Yeah, like I said, just now, I, have no con I have no control of how the referees decide to referee the game. And, and I can't control it if, if they give me a foul and I can't get it back. So it is about – that internal vision, you know, keeping my, my mind on moving forward. What's next? You know, not dwelling in the past. So I think I've really grown in that area where I don't care anymore. Like, it's, it's done. It's gone. It happened already. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to watch the game. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay engaged. And I'm going to be ready when, whenever Coach me back in to make an impact. Thanks, Kofi. Go ahead, Brandon. Hey, Kofi. Um, Brad mentioned earlier that it's hard for you guys to kind of do – team activities together with the pandemic going on. So when you guys aren't playing basketball, what kind of things are you, are you guys doing at the apartment or at the hotel to kind of keep busy? We do a lot of things. Um, you know, we're, we're a really close team, I think. Um, I think the guys love each other. They really, they really like connect, especially the freshmen. The freshmen, they spend a lot of time together. Time together. We, so far we've been, I have a Switch, a Nintendo Switch, and I bought Mario Kart, I bought Smash, Smash Bros. So, you know, we, we would be down there sometimes, eight of us, nine of us is playing Mario or, or Smash Bros. And we have, a, we have a lot of fun time together. You know, we play cards sometimes. You know, we, we do a lot of stuff together in the apartment, you know, while quarantine. We play, we play video games like Xbox, PS4s, you know, and so forth. We watch movies and so forth. So I think we spend a lot of time together. So regardless of what's going on right now with the pandemic, I think we're really connected. You know, we love being around each other. And we don't get bored of each other. I don't think, like, it's been so long since we were quarantined. And every single day we're together. Every single day we're together having fun together, you know, whether we're doing one thing or the other. So I think we're really good. We're in a good spot with just being together and being able to do activities. 
who are some of the best at Super Smash Bros? I'm the best. I'm the best at Smash. And you, know, you have Connor, you have Brandon, the freshman. They're, 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 they're the ones that's really good. Um, Trent Fraser is really good at Mario Kart. Mario Kart. Yeah, he's been, he been beating me for so long. But like, yeah, I feel like I'm definitely the best in Smash. Brandon's probably second. Connor is probably there, right there, right there with me. Thanks, Kofi. Kofi, uh, Illini fans haven't seen some of these new Gopher players. Do you, what did you learn from watching the video of uh, uh, Robbins, the guy you're going against, and Booth Gotch? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think they're ready to play, play in the Big Ten. I think they're really physical players. And I just have to, like, basically stick to my personnel, know my personnel. Um, coach, like I said earlier, coaches do a good job of preparing us for that game. Um, Robbins is a really good player, really good touch. You know, he's going to run the floor. He's going to post deep. Kind of similar to Luca Garza with his motor. So I just have to keep my body on him, make sure I'm being physical with him, boxing him out. He likes to wedge a lot. So it's just about just being engaged, you know, just sticking to the plan. We have a plan for everybody that we go against and just sticking to the plan. Similar um, to Luke Garza is saying something. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because that dude is really a dominant player. And I just feel like that motor, that's uh, that's really big with bigs. When you have a big that can run the floor that well, post up that well, you know, with, with good touch, that's that's scary, you know? And you have to respect that. So just Thanks. about not being, being engaged. Okay, that'll wrap us up for with Cove. Thank you guys for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you.